Well, thank you very much for staying with us and joining us for the AM News Review. And we're hosting the NDC's parliamentary candidate for South Tong, Maxwell Lukuto. He is our guest this morning. Good morning, Maxwell. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Ah, well, God has given us life. A new month has started. It's a Monday. We're here. You know, sometimes we, we fail to take the so-called little things, appreciate them, as much as we ought to. But without life, without health, I wouldn't be here. So my life isn't perfect, but um, we're glad to be alive all the same. I don't know about you. Yeah, sure. No matter what happens, we should be grateful that we are awake and we have life. There are people who want that they wouldn't get there. So why not be grateful to God for giving us a new life? No matter the challenges we face as a people, it is good to always be grateful after a long night waking up to see what the beauty of the world brings to us as a people. And so, yes, I'm grateful to God for yet another day. Mm. Reminds me of Stone Boy's song, Lek uh -huh. uh, uh, We have life and we're grateful to God. Anyway, well, so, like Bagbe, huh? yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be getting into the papers shortly. Let me just acknowledge Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. And every morning before the news review, I do this. Listen. If you're a man, especially if you've hit your 30s, and nowadays even those sub-30 are experiencing prostate issues. It's, it's becoming problematic for many men, and you would want to check out your prostate. Know the state of your prostate. You've never gone for a health check. You've never checked out what's happening with your reproductive system, your prostate, and you're just walking around. Do you know you could actually have a tumor or malignant tissue in that place and that that could actually reach out to other organs, maybe leading to your death? Are you aware of that? So get yourself checked if you're a man. If you're a woman, do you know your status when it comes to fertility? Do you know how fertile you are? Do you know whether you're having some growths around areas in your reproductive system? How about fibroids? It's becoming a common thing. It is for these reasons that Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic is offering free prostate screening and fertility screening for women. Gratis, free. All you need to do is head to any of their outlets in Ghana. Now, here's where you can locate them. Here in Accra at Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. In Kumasi, Kronum Abwehia behind the Angel Educational Complex. Then there is Tema Community 22. There is Techiman Hanswa, Esiema Enzima, and Takrade Anaji Estate. I can't leave that out. All of these places. If you'd like to call them, which I suggest you do, the number to call 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. End Point Homeopathic Clinic. The end to chronic disease. But only the commencement of the news review. Now, I usually do this, Maxwell, and I'm going to do this with you as well. When it comes to some of the major issues we've been hit with, one of them is the Domahene saying that, look, where the case has got to in respect of James Jachikwason, and I want you to address this not as a member of the NDC, but putting on your Ghanaian cap and uh, putting on those lenses generally uh, in terms of our national life. Let James Jachikwason go, like Moses uh, to Pharaoh. Let my people go. The fact yeah, is, there are criminal charges against him. We all know of them. Perjury, among others, in court, at the apex court. And yes, some of those other issues being addressed by other courts initially. And we also have the other side of the coin where... Some people say that the Domahene, who himself has been a judge before, should not have waded into those waters, calling for a nolle prosequi among others, a termination of the case. What do you make of this situation? It's an interesting situation, and when sometimes people feel that they are more uh, or better placed to discuss public issues rather than some other people in society. It makes me laugh because we all are Ghanaians and for me, these are the very people whose voice we should be hearing in issues of this nature. The Domahini as a person, somebody I personally know, don't forget I am a surveyor and I do services for the courts. And so I have met him on few occasions when I was making presentations to the courts. 
is an astute judge who looks at issues dispassionately. And so I have learned under his feet as a surveyor who makes presentation to the court. And I wasn't surprised to hear him speak on this matter. For me, these are the people we should be allowing to engage in national discourse. Because sometimes if you are not a lawyer, you speak about some of these things, it, it doesn't make sense to people who claim they are in the legal fraternity. And so for me, it is a loud message being sent by the Domahini that looking at the situations, even if he was on the bench, uh, adjudicating over the matter of the equation where the, uh, his, uh, his uh, election to become a member of parliament was announced, he would have voted on the other side because he doesn't see the sense in everything. Because for me, before the EC finally enrolled him to become a candidate, he was qualified. And for me, if anybody should be blamed from the beginning of the process, it should be the EC, not that equation. Because I have made my case. You vetted me. You cleared me to contest. I contested. I won. I'm in parliament. Why should somebody today come and say that? At the beginning of the process, my renunciation certificate was not available, and for which reason my election should be announced. It, it but really but, but you do accept that these are technicalities in the law, and like Mr. President mentioned at a point, Adamu Dramani Sakande, the same situation befell him, though there may be differences in terms of uh, when he was putting in the request, when he was filing, when he became a member of parliament, still holding citizenship different from uh, the Ghanaian one. In this instance, there's a shade of a difference, but the law is the law, isn't it? Yeah, so between me and you, we know that these are two different scenarios and situations. Adam Sakandi, at the time, he was still the MP in parliament. He was still holding uh, 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 another country's uh, 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 citizenship. The Burkina business and, and, and the other. And so I don't see why the president of all people should be wading into such cases and make comparisons that are critically different, like apples and oranges. The fact that they are all around doesn't make them same. And so for me, I don't want us to be referring to Adam Sakandi's case because there are two separate issues. We knew that uh, Jatikwesi had applied officially for this. If not for COVID, he would have had it earlier. Yes. But my point is that the EC, which is the superintendent, saw everything he presented and was satisfied and cleared him to contest. And at the time he contested and won, he was no longer a Canadian citizen. So I didn't see why the president of all people should also be waiting into such a situation and make such a comparison. I, I really don't see it. And for me, if you say that it's a technical issue and we should not speak about it, what about the High Court judge? Is it not technical enough to know whether it was right or wrong? Between me and you, maybe we are not lawyers, so they could say it's a technical issue. We cannot speak about it. What about the High Court judge? Ben, what about him? He's also not technical enough to speak about the matter. So for me, these are things we should see beyond the ordinary thing of law. It's about persecuting him. It's about decreasing the number of the NDC in parliament. It's about they wanting the number to do whatever they did with us against the will of Ghanaians. It, that's all they wanted to do, not necessarily because they are applying the law. How many times have we not seen the law review and it has gone against the state? So for me, the fact that at a point somebody or judges would have made a case or judge in favor of a particular instance doesn't make it right. People can go for review and they are overturned. So, and we have the right to, to, to criticize the judgment as and when it comes. And I am so happy that it is not the ordinary people who, who are criticizing. It's not, it's not only NDC which is criticizing this, but a high court judge of high standing has also come to contend it in no uncertain terms. And so for me, let's not think about whether we, we, we are a better place to, to critique it or not. A high court judge has come to critique it. And for me, that is the IC on the case. Who would have said outside? Any time we speak about it, people would think that because we are NDC, that is why we criticize whatever comes from uh, uh, this inept MPP government. But no. A high court judge of repute has also come to speak about it. So for well, me, that uh, has brought right, my right. to the... So, so I, I'd just like to find out from you to cap off this, this conversation on, on this bit. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right, right? And what is good for the goose is good for the gander. You, you accept that? Yeah, sure. All right. So if it was wrong in one breath, 
saying that Mr. President should not have said what he did, intimating that, look, if you, if you vote for this person, he'll be saddled with legal issues. There'll be quite a conundrum for him. And you don't want that, suggesting that maybe this candidate will not be legally viable. When, when the Domahene does it, is that one okay? Was, was, he out of turn, was he out of turn because chiefs, um, <clears throat> they are expected not to wade into politics per our constitution. Some feel in this instance he waded right into the middle of it. I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, sometimes I've got people who are technical enough to, to read meaning into things to speak about them. The father is a chief. He hasn't mounted an NDC platform, did he? It was not a political platform. It was, it was, it was a, 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 a letter in memory of uh, our former president, Arthur Mills. And what prevents him from speaking openly about the ills of society that he thinks are wrong? My brother, should we not get to the state where people can feel free and criticize whatever is happening in this country? He's a chief. Today, it is JT Kwasi. Tomorrow, it may be him. Tomorrow, it may be you. So the earlier we speak about some of these things and leave them in the bar, the better it is for us. Let's not cover ourselves under this clothes of, oh, you are a statesman, you are a chief. Only prevent them from being politically active. And in this instance, he wasn't. And so the president of the land, the speech he made, the conclusions he, he made, the deductions he made, they were prejudicial. Uh, you see, so for me, what he said is about criticizing the judgment that was given and what is actually on the table now. That if he were there, he would advise them to enter a nolly prosecutor where they could stop the case all over. Because the question he asked is that what benefit will really will it really be to us as Ghanaian? Chasing him, prosecuting him for criminal charges, and at the end of the day, what do you receive as a reward? The person has gone through the election. He has won convincingly more than even the first time. Gavita actually, actually, he, he got... <clears throat> in this instance, he secured about 200 fewer votes, but he got a higher percentage in terms of overall... Uh, votes cast. That is the situation. So for you, a nolly yeah, prosequi, no, entering a nolly prosequi would be the way I to go. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. It should be a way to go. And for me, if not government will still continue to be disgraced, it they will be disgraced. Because some of, some of us who are not, yes, of course, lawyers sitting behind, and once the high court judge has said it, it means that he could also see what some of us ordinary people are seeing. All right. And so they, they should really enter a knowledge prosecutor and then forget about whatever is happening. The guy has won, he's been re-elected. The people have told them in their peace, in spite of all the negative things they did on the ground, the rule construction and the money they shared and all the things they did. The people of Asino still said that this is our man. We are going to vote for him. Send him to prison. We still love it. After all, Kami Kuma came from prison to become the president of Ghana. Mandela came from prison to become the president of Ghana. Right. So for me, the more they persecute him, the more they make him popular and the more government will be made unpopular. Right, and uh, word on the streets from the grapevine is that there actually could be more of such cases in Parliament. Well, let's get into the Daily Graphic newspaper. Protect, invest in public media. That's according to the Speaker. Now, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagman, has extolled the importance of the media in nation building and called on all stakeholders, especially the state, to support them. He stated that no institution, including Parliament, could succeed without the role of the media. The speaker insisted that media institutions were a priority that every president had to hold dear and investing. Quoting him, he says, in practical terms, you are the movers and shakers of politics and development. There is no doubt about that. And it is the reason every president should hold dear and invest in it, Mr. Bagman, Bagman said. Now, he made the assertion during a visit to the Graphic Communications Group Limited last Thursday to share his perspectives on the annual Press Freedom Index on Ghana and discuss how the media could partner Parliament to celebrate activities marking the 30th anniversary of parliamentary democracy. In terms of the impact of the media, he said, well, he re recollected how the media propelled him when he was thrust into the position of a minority leader as, quote, a young boy with a new face in 2001. It was the media that held me on, marketed me, followed me around, and made me what I am today. And so I hold dear the media 
the speaker said. There's also GIA graphics sensitized public to importance of insurance. Beyond Martyrs Day, address human rights abuses, Reverend Opuni Frimpong tells lawyers. Safeguard democratic traditions and institutions, Dr. Mwakuti Nation, an office of registrar of companies, extends deadline for the filing of annual returns and renewals to September. Uh, before I, I get your take, let me just do one or two more stories and then you can just sum them all up. Let's turn to page 16 now. And um, the immediate past general secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Kwabno Puni from Pong, has called on the Ghana Bar Association to go beyond the mere commemoration of Mater's Day to talk about the human rights abuses in the system. He said after 40 years of the celebration of the unfortunate killing of the three high court judges, it was time for the association to raise concerns about the continuous violation of people's rights. He said people were gradually losing trust in the justice delivery system and rather resorting to unorthodox means of resolving issues, including invocation of deities and seeking refuge in the media. Quoting him, he says, they should go beyond the celebration of Memorial Days and raise conversation on issues of human rights. Let me cap it off. Just these three for you to reflect on. Safeguard democratic traditions, institutions, Dr. Mwako, to nation. And the country must safeguard its democratic traditions and institutions in order to progress, uh, the president of the Africa Center for Economic Transformation, Dr. Kingsley Yabwa Amwako, has said. That will be a perfect complement to the solutions it is implementing to address the economic problems. He Added. So these three stories, safeguarding democratic traditions and institutions, addressing human rights abuses on matters they or by the, the Ghana Bar Association, and then protecting and investing in public media uh, by the Speaker of Parliament. Quick thoughts? Yeah, so our survival as a people and as a nation depends on the fourth arm of government, which is the media. Of course, it cannot be overrated, cannot be underrated. And so for me, once we don't invest in them, we are asking them to do whatever pleases them. And for the national media in particular, because for the private media, the, the, the uh, person who establishes this has his, his, his job cut out for him, whether it is barely for business or for other interests, he decides. But for the public media, uh, parliament can go and do their business in the chamber or within the chamber. If the media doesn't come out to speak about this, who knows about whatever they have done? We need to see what goes on in Parliament. We need to read what goes on in Parliament now. With the online stories, we will read and know about exactly what went in, who said what, what the decisions are finally. And so once they are not probably invested into, they will do their own thing, twist stories to suit whatever situation they are in. Yes, of course. The private media, most of them, I wouldn't say all, oh, most of them are not being properly run and they are under the behest of those who may want to induce them in some way or another. There are times we hear about stories that are supposed to be aired and people go behind the scenes to make people stop airing them and all those other things based on maybe what they can rule out. And so for me, it is a good call by Bagby, especially for the uh, public media to be supported in every form and shape. For instance, we have the Ghana News Agency, and then they are up to their tasks, and then they can always put stories that people can feed on, other media houses can feed on. Uh, even if they are not able to go physically, there is a source they can get it from. So for me, it's a good call by Bagby. He cited himself as a typical example, how media has helped him to get to wherever he's got into, and for me, it's a good thing. Once we don't allow the media to operate the way we expect them to, then it means most of us to be left in the dark. We wouldn't be too sure exactly what situations are on. We cannot check on the executive and parliament and then even the judiciary. And so for me, investing in them is key. Now, back to the situation where judges and then the Ghana Bar Association usually every year meet and only mark the matters day, like has been said, we should think critically about the other issues of human rights abuses that go on on daily basis within in the country. And so for me, the last time I was shocked to see them only descend solely on Honorable Kwame Agboja for criticizing the Supreme Court judge that retired 
uh, citing some of his judgments that he felt that were not the best that we should be uh, uh, taking as a people and as a country. And they had to descend heavily on him. I feel that they should allow people to criticize them as and when we feel they are not really our best. They are not thing gods. They are human as we are. Yes, all of us belong to a professional association. The fact that they are part of the court system or the, the judiciary doesn't make them sacrosanct and that they cannot make any mistake. We are all able to make mistakes. And so sometimes for me, like said, they should be thinking about the human rights abuses right. that come on daily basis and want to speak about them rather than just, just, just holding everything to their chest and concentrating on whatever happens. You see, right. there's right. a kind of in this country that judgment is not for the poor, it's not for you in the village, it's for the rich, it's for the affluent in society, it's for very notable people. And so somebody can just unjustifiably, uh, unjustifiably take you to court and once you are not strong enough, especially with your pocket line up to go behind the scene and see people, right. you, you, you have not get it just. We saw a lot of chiefs complaining about this. And for me, it is high time they begin to look as us as the people for whom they are fighting for. Okay. They are not fighting so, for themselves. So, so it is not their image that should be most important to them, but the freedom we enjoy as a people right. that they should look Okay, so I get the point you're making. I don't think anyone is saying that they, they are sacred cows, that they cannot be... Uh, criticized, but the point is to what level of criticism and how does the person go about it? So it's a two-way street. I, I concur with you, but there's also the other end of knowing, seasoning what you say, because that is also a bastion of our democracy, the judicial system, the, the, the third arm of the realm. And if we, we lose that, you know what the consequences would be. And trust in that system is also crucial to the development of our, I, I think we should still say, budding democracy. Yes. Well, on page five, Human Rights Watch accuses Burkina Faso of killings, a slew of extrajudicial killings, forced disappearances, and instances of torture by uh, Burkina Faso's military as terrorized communities in the country's northeast this year, according to a Human Rights Watch report released. And uh, there's also Mali's junta partially reshuffles government. Those stories on page five of the Daily Graphic. But let's quickly get into the Daily Guide. And um, we have just about a maximum five to six minutes, Maxwell. So try to lump these together within the time we have. Baumia Alan Cash at vetting today. Story on page three. Government averts Dumso. Also on page three. NDC marks Professor Mill's 10-year uh, anniversary. Of course, that uh, unfortunate incident uh, 10 years ago on July the 24th. Then Ghana gets accreditation service law and let's use public funds judiciously. Dr. Stephen Amwa, Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, says so. But let me go to page three. That's where I'm going to focus. The cast of the new patriotic party presidential contenders for 2024 seems largely set as the party begins vetting of applicants today, Monday, July the 3rd, 2023, with Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumi and Alan Kwejo Chabatin on the first schedule. Mr. Chabating, the former Trade and Industry Minister, will first appear before the nine-member vetting committee, which will be chaired by Professor Aaron Michael Quay, the former Speaker of Parliament. As part of the MPB's presidential nomination process, the committee will look into the aspirants' competence, qualifications, and contributions to the party. Mr. Chabating will be followed by energy specialist Kojopoku before Dr. Baumia takes his turn on the hot seat of grilling, according to Evans Nimako, Secretary to the vetting committee. Let me lump it up with um, government averting Dumso. In a last minute effort to prevent a major power crisis, the government has made a payment offer to the independent power producers after an emergency meeting held on Friday, June the 30th, 2023. And of course, that is on the back of the 30% the demanded by the IPPs. Quick, quick, quick thoughts. Maxwell? Yeah, so uh, the beauty contest uh, between the 10 aspirants of the MPP, I call it a beauty contest because you see You call it a what? Doing... You call Hello? it a what? A beauty contest? Yes, a beauty contest among the 10. Uh, why why do you call them, it that? We saw they are doing each other on the stage. As I see now, somebody is on the stage speaking, another was ushered in through the front door, ostensibly to to disrupt whatever was going on after that, 
We saw uh, 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 apologies from Nanabi. We heard uh, Kennedy Adjepon lambasting them for making it look only for uh, Baumia as against uh, Alan Chemanti. And for me, some of these things uh, in politics, sometimes it makes it very unhealthy for the contestant. Mm. For me, I'm sure at the level of Alan Chemanti and Baumia and all other contestants, they will see each other as friends. But usually on the turf, you see some people trying to undo one another. And for me, uh, whoever emerges, whatever happens, but I'm not sure during the betting today, any of them, especially Alan Chemanti and Baumia, would have issues with themselves because these are distinguished people in the party, so they say, who have done the best or all the food for the party. We as the other side are seeing it as a, a, a beauty contest. At the end of the day, whoever emerges, the, <laughs> the, the crown prince will come to face our dear John Jamani Bahama. And we are very confident that, is, that none of them is going to be a match. How, how do you think they would fare in a beauty contest with John Dramani Mahama? So no, that's what I'm saying, that I don't think any of them can match up. Do, 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 look, look at the situation we are in. We are just hearing that Kumso has been averted. Averted by who? By how? What percentage had uh, uh, in, uh, the IPP is looking for? How much were they offered? We heard John Dramani Mahama, the president, former president of Ghana, uh, last week, passionately appealing to them that they don't take us back. And I'm sure they've listened to uh, President John Dramani Mahama, for which they have toned down on their intent to go on uh, uh, whatever they want to do to shut down. And uh, I'm not too sure how much has been given to them, but I'm not sure it's up to whatever they are demanding. Uh, we are actually sitting on a time bomb, and it's just a matter of time. If they decide to switch off, we we'll would all go down again. Uh, John Damani Mahama has been somebody we, uh, we, we have all ambassador for causing him. So he's the very person who is being blamed now for giving us excess power. And it really doesn't make sense. If the person has given you excess power, you cannot manage it well to suit our situation. How do you go back blaming him? Right. Uh, these are visionary leaders who would make sure that we have what we need and have it in essence. Right. This uh, one, this one factory that they intend to have, if they have ruled them out, I'm sure they would have used the excess power that they claim is available. Well, we don't, we don't have the benefit yeah, of excess. causing them not to be able to meet Maxwell, the case of uh, the IPP. Uh, we, so we, for we, me, it is a mismanagement. All right. Uh, thank you for that point. We actually don't have excess power now, but we'll see how that, be that beauty pageant will turn out in 2024. Let's wrap with this story, but before we get there, Vake Vake Mede, uh, Vake Vake Mede uh, says, Presenter, you don't know turn up. I think you mean um, voter turnout. In general elections, is different from by election. Um, what's the difference? Well, you say... Your argument of votes for the re-elected MP is untrue. Can you give us the percentage of turnout in the general and the by-election? Be sincere. Honorable James Jachi, Kwesun got more votes and percentage. Well, some of you, I think you get emotional about stuff. No one is trying to water down what he did. He had a higher percentage, indeed, compared to the general election uh, in 2020. But the point is, yes, there may be, have been the voter turnout, but the point is that the number of votes, he had a lower number of votes, comparatively. That's all I said. Sometimes we shouldn't be so uh, emotional, yeah, about, <clears throat> emotional about F1 these F1 things. He had, he had a smaller number of votes, about 200 three, less. Maxwell, uh, uh, just a point, just a point, Maxwell. What happens at the can night? you hear me, Maxwell? Right at the police center that I'm on. Doesn't what appear Maxwell can hear me. Maxwell, the point, it doesn't appear yeah, when I'm talking, you can hear me because you keep coming in when I'm uh, speaking. I'm just making the point that in terms of the votes he secured, 2020 versus 2024, there's a difference. But in terms of now, the numbers that voted and how many voted for him, he has more. Why should that even be a problem? But uh, just to wrap on this story. Nat headquarters donates 251 live jackets to teachers. That story is on page nine. We've actually brought it to you in the news and the headquarters of the Ghana National Association of Teachers is worried about continuous sporadic reports of teachers who get drowned in various parts of the Volta Lake while en route to uh, their various schools. Alarmed at the frequency of these incidents, of course, the leadership donated 251 live jackets to teachers stationed in communities along the Volta Lake in and the OT region, in the OT region. That's the story there. The other one, 2022 RTI report presented to Parliament. Maxwell, we have to go. Any final thoughts for us? 
Okay. Yeah, so about this not uh, 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 mm. Ghana Chance Institute of Teachers, right? Do little life jackets to teachers in remote areas and especially things that are not move that we have in every district is supposed to be doing. The last time we saw a story where whatever NAPMU was giving to the people of South and that it was not really going to protect them. It's a good show by now. This is a failure of our national institutions to protect the lives of people who they have been put there to protect. And it has to take individuals and associations to come to the aid of their teachers. <coughs> it's a good show by now, and we must commend them. And then say that government is not living up to its expectations to make sure that the people they post to do to remote areas and uh, overboard uh, uh, communities to teach right uh, they are not for their lives and so for me uh, we have to commend that uh, not for a good job done all right and say that not to live up to expectation and make sure that our teachers are safe maxwell for our thank you make sure that they teach them and get us all safe it's been good having you join the conversation as always maxwell lukoto he is ndc's parliamentary candidate for south Tone. max have a good week good week thank you so much all right. And that's how we cap off the news review segment. It's been brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. If you're a man, they are offering you free prostate screening. If you're a woman, free fertility screening. All you have to do, make tracks to their various centers across the country. Here in Accra at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard. Kumase, Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. The Stakradi Anaji State Tema Community 22. Techiman Hansu and Esiama Enzima. If you want to call them, which I proffer for you, reach them on 244 Eight six seven zero six eight or zero two seven four two three four three two one. End point homeopathic clinic. The end to chronic disease. But sports is up next. We have all the filler coming up for you. Do stay. <laughs>